There's a lot of confusion about what this quote-unquote self-inquiry thing is. And uh, it's actually extremely straightforward. Now, when self-inquiry is done correctly, it feels like you've let go and surrendered every piece of not just the environment, but of quote unquote, yourself by completely vanishing and dissolving into the fabric of reality. Just keep asking yourself who you are and what you are. And whatever answer is generated by the mind is not it. You want to peel away the layers of the onion, layer by layer, so it dissolve your conditionings and identities. So if you say I'm Frank Yang, and you just know not this or not that, natty natty method. And if you say I'm a spiritual person, you say not this. You say I'm a musician, not this. I'm Asian, I'm a male. Whatever answer the mind throw at you is not it. Eventually, you're gonna come to a place of silence where the question and the answer arise and vanish in the exact same you know, space. Now, a lot of people stop here and think the stillness is the true self. You can go further. If you can still experience and observe the space of silence, then you can still further objectify it as not self. Remember what could be experienced, looked at, is not self. So, let's do a more simple, yet more advanced practice of self-inquiry and take it all the way. Now, I think a more effective way to do self-inquiry is just to look at objects, observe objects. First, an environment, then work your way into the mind, the body. So, I can see the leaves and the tree. That's not me, not this, not that. I can see the sky, the clouds, not this, not that. And now you begin to look inward. Let's start with the body first. I can see my body, I can feel my body, not this, not that. See, it's not just the things that you can observe. It's not just the phenomena that you can witness. Whatever you can sense and experience, you know that as not this and not that, not me, not self. So, can I witness and observe the mind? Not this, not that. Can I sense the sound? <laughs> not this, not that. Can I sense and feel my feelings? You can witness a feeling. Not this, not that. You want to be able to objectify your entire field of experience. That's why it's really important to dissolve the center with Vipassana so infinity or the absolute can penetrate itself so thoroughly that you can experience, without that experiencer, the entire field of reality. Simultaneously, all at once, as all sensations, sight, sound, body sensations, thoughts, emotions, everything is just aware of itself without you in the center, simultaneously. See, the whole point is to objectify everything so there is no more distinction between subject and object that's not duality now if you objectify everything in your field of experience and inside your mind and your body then where's the subject? nowhere there's gonna be a point where you feel like you're stuck where you're observing everything you're observing the mind you're observing thoughts and sensations and then you think that that's it. You think that this observer, this witness, this God mind that's witnessing everything, this eternal, unchanging emptiness is it, is your true self. No, no. Because the observer must also be uh, observed, objectified, and witnessed. You have to witness the witness. Be aware of awareness. Even be conscious of God or infinite consciousness. You turn even your most intimate subject, the witness, that which is closer than close, that which is witnessing everything else into just another object of perception. Huh. That's very tricky to do. You need some minor or major concentration power. That's why Vipassana and self-inquiry must go hand in hand.
<laughs> pika pika. <laughs> pika pika. So when people come to the space where they they're, they feel like this there's this vast huge empty space and they think oh I don't know who I am. I'm looking for it, but I can't find it. If there is still an experience there, if you can still experience or witness and sense, no matter how subtle that nothingness is still something, the emptiness is still not no self. No self is not emptiness. It's not empty space. It's not empty space. You can say it's emptiness, but emptiness is not a substrate. Emptiness is not light. Emptiness is not darkness. Emptiness is not awareness or consciousness. Emptiness is not absolute. Emptiness is that which manifests all of existence. Emptiness is the process of dependent origination where no objects has an inherent existence apart from the interpenetration and interrelations. There's no cup aside from that which is contained. So emptiness in of itself, true self, in of itself, would be said to be non-existent, which is why again it manifests all of existence. See? If you can experience all of reality, then where are you? The best way I could describe this experience of non-experience is that it's a singularity, but it doesn't even have a point. See? Because it doesn't have a point, it's also non-local, a unilocal. And if there is no subject, the object also vanishes. And if everything vanishes, that means everything is full simultaneously. Ta da! Now, when self inquiry is done correctly, you are gonna feel like you're dying. You're gonna die over and over and over again. You're dying into the ordinary, moment by moment. You're dying into the extraordinary, moment by moment. And you're so immersed in the present moment that even the power of now doesn't exist. There's no past, there's no future. And if the past, the present, and future codependently arise through, with, and as each other, then without one, the other two don't exist either, see? See, you want to go beyond the I amness and one mind phase popularized by Rumana Murashi and go even beyond Sri Nasagada, who wrote I am that, and the absolute nothingness that he advertises. This is not to make a claim about their realization, it's just that they're teaching in and of itself. You can transcend them both and experience every moment through dependent origination as quantum entanglements without neither the nodes nor the links. It's like moving from a centralized government bank to infinite pieces of bitcoins. Each contains its own universe, is self-aware, and, sp and spread out, smashed into a million pieces exactly where they are. Huh? That doesn't mean you can experience the stages from before. But he just have take them out from the pedestal as they be in the absolute. Because no state is any more absolute than any other states because the absolute is not a state in of itself or no experience. <laughs> uh, but see, even dependent origination is empty. As the Buddha said, all Dharma is empty. And full. <laughs> and I be see a Buddha on the road kill him. So to sum up, you're not the body, you're not the mind, you're not perception, you're not consciousness or awareness. Where, when, where are you, brah? If everything I'm saying here sounds paradoxical, it's because it is. So let me clarify a few things. So true self of no self cannot be experienced is precisely because there isn't one to begin with. <laughs> that is so simple, man. God damn it. And it's precisely because you are nothing and that there is no experiencer that everything could be experienced. If you look at zero, you see nothing. But you look through zero, you see the whole world. It's like being on a permanent, natural, psychedelic trip from different planet every nanosecond because it's constantly morphing, I'm fluctuating, kidding. changing, vibrating. <laughs> 
No self is like an eyeball that can't see itself but it sees everything else. Actually, yeah, the lived experience of no self feels a bit like you don't have eyes anymore. You don't look out through your head, but this is cosmic and divine eyeball, boundless, timeless hologram. This is perceiving itself in all directions, from nowhere and everywhere, and penetrating the character's meat suit. Since there's no more distinction between inside and outside. Now, a lot of people get stuck during the observing the observer phase. See, what the observer is, is just solidify sensations, pretending to be the one that's looking, but none could be found. When your uh, constitutional power is strong enough to depersonalize and dissolve even the witness into smokes, the only thing left to do is let go, surrender, go away into the fabric of the universe. When emptiness is formed, there's perception but no one perceiving. There's awareness but no one's aware. <laughs> there's not even somebody there doing a the self-inquiry. <laughs> Hell yeah, bitch! Hell yeah, bitch! So you can't chain. make anything happen or create anything that isn't already happening by itself. Even the intention of trying to be aware or trying to do self inquiry is part of the causal phenomenon of the universe. So you depersonalize even the depersonalizer and see that the intention of trying to be aware which is sensation is no different from any objects that you're trying to depersonalize. Hence the whole notion of observing or witnessing thought is an illusion. There is neither the thinker nor the observer. Since all sensations, uh, this includes infinity or objects, phenomenons, sight, thought, sound, bodies, emotions, are aware of themselves in their own place and all are equal footing. And no flux of sensation ever causes another. Everything is simultaneously and spontaneously codependent rising. There's absolutely no place for the observer. See, self inquiry is all about going meta. You keep jumping from one level to the next and observe until the mind reaches its limit. And at one point, there's no more room when everything's full to go meta anymore. Infinity closes the loop or the circuit on itself. That's awakening. Another way to put it is before awakening, one cluster of sensation in your field of experience is always going to hijack and make a self out of another cluster of sensations until all sensations untangle themselves and there's no contraction anywhere. So the difference between self and no self is just the contraction and expansion of energies or sensations. 99% of the people who can't take this all the way by doing self inquiries because they don't understand the nature of sensations. See a lot of people mistaking the midway stages to be the true no self. Experiencing God mind from the center is not true no self. When you dissolve the small self, the big self also vanish. You cannot have a pure experience of God if you're still an experiencer. That's the difference between recognizing Brahman and then becoming Brahman. Or you fucking the universe versus the universe having an orgy or fabbing to itself. <laughs> and the total loss of identity that uh, you feel at the emptiness and nothingness phase is also confused with no self. If you still have an experience of total loss of identity, that's the only identity that could be experienced, objectified, and disembedded from. You don't have a body, you don't have a mind. There's this world which is also empty, turning. And every part of this hall is doing its best to make every moment absolutely perfect and disjointed. There's no would have, could have, should have. The webs of the infinite origination. And you feel like everything in this field of experience. Every single quantical particle, even though there is no particle, that's just a metaphor for your science nerd and materialistic cunts. For lack of a better word, every single particle is connected to every other particle. And every other particle is connected to every other other particle. 
<laughs> and every particle is penetrating itself so thoroughly that there is no space for the separate self to existing, see? Because even the air in between objects is infinitely full and made up of the exact same no thing as the sky, the leaves, even the rocks, the body, the hair, the eyeballs, the teeth, the tongue, the livers, the thoughts, the feelings, the memories, the traumas, <laughs> the fucked upness, the perfectness, the limitedness, the unlimitedness, the perfection, the imperfection, all of it. All of it. No different. <laughs> it's not even consciousness. There's not even awareness because all those terms are just a projection of your separate self. God itself would not label itself as this or that. You just comprehend or apprehend itself. You're not going to ask trees or birds or dogs what is awareness. Or do you feel like you are aware? No, you just really have an experience. And another way to empty out the self is to see how all the aggregates, everything in the mind, perception, the world, feelings, all fabricated. And the perceiver, just part of that mirage. So if you empty out the aggregates by putting your awareness on experiences or phenomena until everything uh, dissolves from solidity to liquid to spoke to air, and you see that there's nothing in the center that's holding things together and you realize anatta you become truly unilocal your existence of non-existence it's really everywhere and nowhere simultaneously it's like your moment to moment experience is like a constant process of quantum entanglement <laughs> without neither the links nor the notes and there's no delay at all the emptiness of self and mind is kind of like the weather you know the weather is not a thing in and of itself it's somehow stable and unchanging it's the dependent origination into relativeness of the rain the clouds the sky temperature and it's so all these phenomenon coming together at the precise moment that gives rise to quote unquote weather right now you see that the universe is this way precisely because of infinite webs and infinite webs of conditions likewise nothing not even emptiness has an inherent existence. See, Bruce Lee said that to empty out the self is like having an empty cup, but no, there is no cup. Emptiness does not exist apart from that which it contains. See, be careful not to rarefy emptiness, awareness, into a substrate or a background that's somehow sitting apart from what it is right here in hell. See, true formlessness doesn't even have a substance. There's no size, no time, and no dimension. Consciousness is not a mirror, there's only reflections. The unmanifested is the manifested. Source is appearance. And you, as all of reality, is not so much a shapeshifter, but there's only shapeshifting. Constantly unfolding, spontaneously. See, the infinite potentiality of the one taste is beyond being or non-being. It's both and neither, the one nor the many. If you don't practice Vipassana and dissolve every particle in your body-mind into empty space, you can't disappear into the flow of reality as that flow. See, any solidity is always going to create a duality between the one asking the question and the answer. And any solidity, even if it's the size of an atom, can still be looked at and objectified. Likewise, if you don't practice the do-nothing meditation where you just get out of the way and the non-dual 360 awareness will automatically be aware of itself. You know, that's the one mind I am this phase. If you don't abide in that or master the six shana of infinite consciousness, again, you can't vanish into it. To disembed from a state, you first have to identify it. Now, ultimately, the contraction method of Vipassana and the expansion method of awareness of awareness practice are the same. And if you zoom experiences into a singularity smaller than an atom, it flips itself inside out in a strange loop and then <laughs> become the whole universe. That's how you complete the circuits, become smaller than the grain of sand, and you shall have the whole cosmos. Now, 
throughout the path, don't get fixated on the idea of trying to eliminate the clinical self. <laughs> Just gonna further solidify sensations. The emphasis is supposed to be on the words permanent, separate, and unchanging. See, if you don't realize no self, you cannot observe impermanence at the deepest level because you still have a center of solidity not only will they cling on to any objects or perception to be the self, where the witness, the witnessing, and the witnessed, not just codependent arising, but roll into one cosmic storm with no eye. See that untangled perceptual knot is going to freeze the flow of impermanence to solidified forms and phenomena. As Zen now describes her moment of enlightenment. She saw that all phenomena arose, abided, and fell away simultaneously. The knowing of all this also arose, abided, and fell away spontaneously. Then she knew that there was nothing more than this. No ground, nothing to lean on, and no one leaning. And then she opens the clenched fist of her mind and jump in. And whatever makes up you a second ago is gone forever, and whatever will make up the you the next second will never come. So stop hating, brah. You got no time to be mad. See, the deepest realization of no self is a fruition or a succession where even consciousness disappears and realize that even consciousness is impermanent. <laughs> the deepest realization of impermanence is just that, also a fruition. When you observe impermanence at the quantum and microscopic level, eventually the mind catches the freeze frame that composes the flow of your life. As you sink into the non space between frames, and then the entire universe disappears. The deepest form of impermanence is non arising and non passing. And this part goes on. And this goes far beyond the typical flow state temporary experience of art.